Participles and participial phrases can function as adjectives. Uh, now what I want to look at here is a particular case, the participial phrase that is separated from the rest of the sentence uh, by a comma or commas. Now this is very common in writing, and, but it's very unusual in speech and so a lot of people are just sort of uncomfortable with this this particular form uh, and uh, want to try to make people a little more familiar with it. Now, uh, let's look at this sample sentence here, the one on top. Hoping for rain, the Germans danced in a ring. Okay, now this thing here, hoping for rain, is our participial phrase. Now notice we got a comma here and then the Germans danced in a ring. Now this part here, the Germans danced in a ring, that, that could stand alone as a sentence. The Germans danced in a ring, period. That, that works fine. Whereas hoping for rain, period. No, that cannot be a sentence. Uh, this thing here is what we call the main clause. Now when a and it's main because it can stand alone. It is the core of the sentence. It's the, the, the bread and butter, the meat and potatoes, whatever. Uh, now, we have here a comma and a participial phrase separated from the main clause by a comma. Now, when that happens, when a participial phrase is separated by a comma or commas from the main clause, that participial phrase modifies the subject. That's something worth remembering. When a participial phrase is separated by commas from the main clause, it modifies the subject. So, uh, how could we test to see that it is modifying the subject? Uh, well, if we said, who or what is hoping for rain? That's our participial phrase. If we turn our participial phrase that's separated from the main clause into a question, the answer better be, the subject. If it isn't the subject, then there's something wrong with the sentence. Uh, who is hoping for rain? The Germans. That's who. And indeed, the Germans is the subject here. Danced is the verb. In a ring is a prepositional phrase. It's modifying danced. Danced how in a ring. Okay. So, uh, this works fine. Now, what's one thing that's interesting and one thing that makes this construction uh, very valuable is that you can move these things around, these participial phrases. Uh, they can go in three places. They can go at the very beginning of the sentence, they can go at the end of the sentence, and they can come immediately after the, uh, the subject of the sentence. So this is at the beginning, but this is just the same as the Germans hoping for rain danced in a ring. That is, hoping for rain, the Germans danced in a ring is exactly the same as uh, the Germans hoping for rain danced in a ring, or the Germans danced in a ring, hoping for rain. These are all acceptable, and the reason there's all this flexibility about where you can put these participial phrases that are separated by commas from the main clause is that uh, there is this rule in place that says no matter where it is, it modifies the subject. Uh, so that means you put it at the end and it will still modify the subject. And it doesn't. Now this hoping for rain is the participle phrase I, I happen to be using. It begins with a present participle, but the same can be done with a participial phrase beginning with a past participle. So seen from a distance, there's our Participial phrase, comma, seen from a distance, New York is lovely. Um, that could just as easily be New York, seen from a distance, is lovely, or New York is lovely, seen from a distance. So uh, there might be a slightly different inflection in these, uh, but they all work grammatically just the same. Uh, and this is an extremely useful construction in writing, even though in speaking, we, it's hardly ever used, even in very simple sentences like uh, uh, hoping to avoid the line, I plan on leaving early. No, nobody says that. Uh, but, but in writing, this is a very useful and versatile construction to, uh, uh, to have at the ready.